Hi there, this is going to be a short vlog for my Intro to Cinema Class final. For this video, I'll be doing a brief analysis of the 1969 classic movie, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, focusing a little on cinematography, a little on analysis of the plot, and maybe a little more on the film's impact for me, seeing it for the first time in class. For years, people, my friends, my family, and the internet have been telling me to watch this film because it's so great, and you know what, it does not disappoint. But for those of you who don't know the tale of Butch Cassidy, this film follows the hijinks, adventures, and spoiler alert, eventual demise of Butch, played by classic movie star Paul Newman, and his right-hand man, the Sundance Kid, who's played by one of my own childhood crushes, Robert Redford. Butch and Sundance were the leaders, in real life, of the famous train-robbing Wild Bunch gang, which is called the Hole in the Wall gang in the film. The film follows them as they flee pursuit by a six-man posse, ending up in Bolivia, where they attempt to go straight, but then end up robbing banks again with the help of Sundance's lover, Etta, played by Catherine Ross. The first scene I want to discuss is probably one of the more well-known scenes because of its bizarre juxtaposition to the rest of the film, the bicycle scene. In this scene, Butch ho brings home a shiny new bicycle, future transportation, and takes Etta on a ride around the property. As they ride, raindrops keep falling on my head starts playing, lending this strangely whimsical and circus-like feeling to a scene in a movie that is otherwise filled with serious drama and gallows humor. The lighting throughout this scene is soft and fuzzy, out of focus which is a trend during the 1960s and 70s that I've observed in cinema, but it also reflects the warm feelings of affection between Edda and Butch. Edda eventually asks him if he ever wonders if they would be together if she met him before Sundance. While the whole scene is tender and sweet, it's so drastically different from the feeling and styling of the rest of the film that it's confusing, disconcerting, and a lot of people really hate this scene. Now the main scene I want to talk about is the last one, so if you haven't seen this film, now is the time to pause this vlog, go watch the movie, trust me, it's worth it. The end of the film finds Butch and Sundance in rural Bolivia. Etta has left them because she knows they won't stop robbing and she can't stand to see them die. They've committed a string of bank and payable robberies throughout the Andes and are being hunted. The whole scene really encapsulates the style of this movie. As the police surround them, we get all the classic cowboy action we could hope for. Guns firing, Butch and Sundance rolling and dodging and leaping and killing it truly improbable number of enemies. They are both eventually hit and retreat into a building, though. Here's where this movie is going to hit you right in the feels. We see them bleeding, battered, and unaware that a literal freaking army, the Bolivian army, is surrounding them outside. They wrap and bandage each other's wounds and discuss moving to Australia. They both know that they're almost certainly not going to make it out of there alive, but they love each other, they're each other's best friends, and they can't just give up. So they smile and laugh, and speak of their next adventure. They want to go out the way they lived, filled with life and hope and vitality. So they load their guns, make their plan, charge out the door guns blazing. As they fire, the scene becomes a still and fades to sepia. Now the intro credits also have this sepia tone, reflecting the sort of fantasy of the film. You know, it's not like a documentary. This fade out also gives us the fantasy of their escape. It protects our tender little hearts from their deaths. And there are still rumors to this day that they both did escape and go on to live in obscurity. This fade out, with no final dramatic tragic death scene, lets us hope for a better future for our two heroes. And you know what? I like that. Because I was rooting for these guys, which is weird, because they're robbers and murderers, right? But the characters are so well written and acted that you want them to survive. That's part of how you know that filmmakers are really doing something right, is when these characters that aren't the best guys, you really want them to live. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you around.